Hey everyone, welcome back for another welding demonstration. In this video, we're going to be covering how to weld in the horizontal position on a T-joint with flux core to arc welding, or FCAW for short. Now specifically, the electrode that I'm going to be using is E71T-8, which is more commonly referred to as NR232. This is the moneymaker out in industry and just one of a handful of flux cord arc welding electrodes that we cover in our program. Now in a nutshell, flux cord arc welding is kind of uh, the combination of shielded metal arc welding and gas metal arc welding, where you're taking the best qualities of both welding processes and essentially merging them into one. So you have all the great penetrating uh, capabilities of shielded metal arc welding. You have all the, the protection from the slag from shielded metal arc welding, but we also have the good qualities from gas metal arc welding, things like not having to replace an electrode stub every single time we run out. We have uh, continuous wired spools that we can just, you know, continuously feed into the welding gun and basically, you know, that'll increase our production times, our, our production rate. And so, like I said, it's like taking the best of both worlds and putting them into one welding process. You can kind of think of welding with FCAW in a similar fashion as shielded metal arc welding, where if there's slag, you typically use a backhand uh, welding technique or you're going to use a drag angle. Now this kind of switches up when we start getting into vertical, but for right now, let's just focus on dragging the weld. So if you remember how to weld with shielded metal arc welding, you're dragging the weld puddle across. And in some cases with GMAW, you're dragging the weld straight across. It's basically the same with flex cord arc welding. And so with that being said, I'm just going to skip over surface welds and we're going to jump right into horizontal fillet welds. Here on the table, I've got everything that you're going to need to weld with flex cord arc welding in a learning type environment. And um, you can see a couple of completed T-joints there already. I was just dialing in my settings with this particular welding machine. I'm using a Millermatic 350P. And this is the welding gun that I'll be using. It looks and operates very similar to welding guns used in gas metal arc welding, or commonly known as MIG welding. There's still a trigger that you're going to press in order to feed wire through the welding gun. There's a hand shield that's built into the gun because with flux cord arc welding, the temperatures can be a little bit hotter than other welding processes. And at the tip of the gun, there's still an insulator and a contact tip. Okay, except in this case, this electrode is self-shielded, so there is no gas nozzle because we don't need any auxiliary shielding gas. The diameter of the electrode is 0.072 or 072. And so just one more time, I am using E71T-8 electrode, more commonly known as NR232. And now let's look at some of the tools that we should be using for FCAW. We're going to need MIG pliers, same as those found in gas metal arc welding. You're going to need either vice grips or some sturdy pliers uh, in order to handle the material after it's been welded. You're going to need a wire brush as always to clean the metal before and after welding. And you're going to need a chipping hammer. I've got some half inch plate pieces that we're going to be welding on. And this welding table also comes with a fixture uh, swinging arm. So that way, if I need to get a better angle on some of these welds, I can go ahead and use this to reposition the weldment. Uh, but we'll see if I need it. Maybe not. And flux cord arc welding does produce a whole lot of uh, fumes and smoke, uh, with this electrode particularly. So I'm going to be using a ventilation system that can suck away all those fumes and really reduce the uh, particulate matter that I might be inhaling. Uh, if you don't have one of these, just make sure that you're in a very well ventilated area, okay? Uh, like I said, flux cord arc welding can produce a whole lot of uh, smoke and fumes. Uh, especially this particular electrode. 
Right here, I'm just tack welding all my pieces together into T-joints, so that way my material is ready to go. One thing I do want you to take note of is how I'm tacking the pieces on the sides, um, basically outside of the area that's gonna be welded. I'm doing this to keep my pieces at a 90 degree or as close to as I can, and to prevent excess buildup along the path of the weld. As I get ready to weld, just take note of my technique, take note of my position, how I'm holding the, the welding gun. I'm using both hands. You can do so with one hand, but you know if you need to, go ahead and use two hands just to stabilize yourself. Notice how I'm just dragging uh, the weld straight across in this dry run. I'm not doing any kind of uh, movements, any weaving, any oscillation. I'm not going up and down. I'm not doing any cursive ease, semicircles, nothing like that. I'm just dragging the weld straight across from start to finish. One other thing that I should mention before we get started here is your stick out. So with gas metal arc welding, where we would want our stick out to be as short as possible, depending on what we're doing, with flux cord arc welding, we actually want a longer stick out. So at least three quarters of an inch to an inch. And that's just so that way the electrode plus the flexing agents inside the electrode have enough time to uh, heat up before they make contact with the arc and then transfer across into the weld. So that was just one simple pass on each side of the T-joint, just to give you an idea of what it looks like to start and finish this weld, and to give you an idea of how I'm positioning myself and moving from start to finish. I hope that you were able to see that I, I really wasn't giving any oscillation to the electrode. If you did see me kind of bump my hands up and down, that was just for some really quick angle corrections, but for the most part, I was just dragging the weld straight across. Once you're done welding, go ahead and use your chipping hammer to remove the slag layer. If you need to, give the weld a few moments to just cool off. Um, the slag layer shouldn't come off you know, with too much difficulty. You should just be able to slide your chipping hammer across the surface of the weld and that slag layer is just going to come right off. Sometimes you'll notice that it crumbles apart, which is okay. But if you find that it takes a little bit more effort to remove the slag layer, like you're actually having to hack at it with a chipping hammer, then something happened with our technique. Maybe our settings were wrong, our travel speed, our angles. We did something wrong and that affected the slag layer. Uh, so like I said, this slag layer should come off with relative ease. And here I'm just doing the same thing, just giving you a couple more passes so that way you get a better idea of what to look at, uh, how to perform this weld. And then I'm also going to give you a couple close-ups once the welds are done and I've chipped the slag off so you can kind of get a better idea of what the profile of the weld is supposed to look like.
And here is a closer uh, view at those two welds that I just did, but with a different camera. This one has a little bit of a filter shade lens on it, so it kind of peeks through all that bright light, but FlexCore does produce a whole lot of smoke, so unfortunately I wasn't able to get a better view past the smoke, but at least here you can get a better idea of what's going on around the arc. Uh, sometimes when the smoke moves out of the way, you can see the approximate length of my stick out, which again is anywhere from three quarters of an inch to about one inch. Now you can have a little bit more than an inch depending on what's going on with your weld puddle, but you never really want to go too far past that or even below three quarters of an inch. We want to stay within that range. Now for anyone wondering what my variables are, these are the settings I was using. So about 20 volts and 180 wire feed speed. And here I'm just gonna give you one last look at a couple more welds. And I'm gonna give you a side by side so that way on the left you'll see what it kind of looks like from far away without any uh, filter shade lens. And then on the right, we're going to have a little bit more of a close-up with a camera that does have a filter shade lens. So you can get both angles at the same time and, you know, just have an even better idea of how to lay down these welds. And this is what the finished product should look like. A nice even fusion on the toes, consistency from start to finish, no low spots, no high spots, no porosity. Uh, so this is with everything coming together. And of course, it might take some practice to get to that point, but this is what all this is about. This is about practicing so that way you can create welds that look just like this. And that's pretty much it for our demonstration for flux quarter arc welding. But before letting you go, I do want to include this image just to kind of emphasize the temperatures that are involved with flux quarter arc welding. So this again is on half inch plate. This is uh, what happened while I was dialing in my settings. So this is after one single pass on a on a T joint, and you can see how red this this plate is. Again, this is one single pass on a half inch plate and so the redness 
you, the glowing that it has, this is just kind of showing you how hot this metal gets with flex cord arc welding. So keeping that in mind, make sure that you have the appropriate gloves uh, to protect yourself. All right. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video.